Hello and welcome back to Kerbal Space Ram. Finally, it has been a while. Today we're getting started with more plane reviews. This is by a William Hudson, who I've replayed some plane, replayed, reviewed some planes of before, including the SP-8. I believe it was the SP-8. Maybe it was the SP-7. I don't know. He has made planes to try to compete with my Mangle idea, which um, will be tested at some point in that combat series thing that I'm going to do. But for now, he sent in what is essentially a modified cruise missile. That is uh, very difficult to fly, apparently. Interesting. And let's see. Modified cruise to intend to be an interceptor. Turn on gimbling only if you lose control. Guns and missiles sold separately. Modified cruise missile intended. So, so it's a remote probe interceptor made out of a cruise missile. That seems like a strange concept to like do on purpose. But let's go ahead and give it a try. Okay. Here goes nothing. And by nothing, I mean a cruise missile, which... Oh, good, it's in it's in wet mode. Good, so it'll go even faster. So, can we get off the ground? Yes, we can. And I guess we'll find out if it's actually hard to fly or not. Oh, oh, now I get it. He's saying turn on gimbal only if you... What was it? I forgot what it said already. So, it comes without gimbal enabled by default. Interesting. Let's turn off the SAS. Yeah, it drops a bit on its own, so it does need a little bit of help staying there. And this is supposed to be a high-speed interceptor, which is based on the fact that it's basically a cruise missile. And let's go ahead and take a look at those. Yep, a little bit of drag on those wings up front. A little bit of drag in the center of the thing. But overall, not very much drag. And we can get going to a pretty decent speed. Let's go ahead and see how well it handles just doing that. It can do some stupid super Well, not super maneuverability stuff because it doesn't have the actual engine... Um, gimbal on but uh, it can do some stuff it can do stupid things and lose aerodynamic control and then recover from it quite well without activating the gimbal also I've noticed ah those are for roll only and these are for pitch only that's an interesting way to do things it seems to handle itself pretty well I guess uh, this I, I kind of it's it's weird because I'm seeing this and flying this and I'm kind of going Where's the part where this is a modified cruise missile? This just seems like a cruise missile design. Like, y you know, this is the kind of thing you would do to have... <laughs> this is great. Like, I'm completely out of control, but this is great. There we go. Now I'm regaining control. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So it is a bit difficult to fly. And once again, though, I wanted to say, I, I don't see how this is a modified cruise missile. I see how this is a cruise missile, but not a modified cruise missile. Because this is basically fulfilling the role of a cruise missile. It doesn't have armaments on it. The only armament this would have is itself crashing into something at high speed. So it basically is a cruise missile. It's interesting. It doesn't it doesn't fly as well upside down as right side up. So I think those uh, canards are ever so slightly angled. Um, the way they're placed. Yeah, it looks like it. No, it's... I don't know. The way it's performing makes me think that they are ever so slightly angled, because it definitely flies better right side up than it does upside down. But it's not too big of a difference. So yeah, there you go. We can have a, a cruise missile, which... I don't know why you would disable the gimbal, because that definitely would help a lot with... Con come on. Uh, come on, come on, come on. Let me click it. Thank you. Having a gimbal would help with controllability quite a bit. Not with roll on this design. Because this thing, uh, it needs an aerodynamic flow for roll. But with any other movement you might want to make, this having having the gimbal enabled means that this turns from being kind of a I don't know, just kind of, well a missile to being something more controllable. Although it's still basically a missile. So I don't know. It's kind of strange. Oop, let's uh, oh, we're gonna hit that. Oh, we didn't. Well, what do you know? Let's, uh, <laughs> that was an interesting way to crash. Oh, you know what? It's because I was going at sufficient speed backwards to where the aerodynamic forces of the angle I was at was forcing me down more than the engine could hold me up. I was wondering why I crashed, but no, it was, it was aerodynamic forces trumping the engine. Which I just realized, there's a guy called Trump going for president, and his name is also used when you're saying like, oh, you trump this or trump that. I, I don't like that. Fuck Trump. So next up, also by William Hudson, we have the SP-10, which is similar to some of his other designs. Wow, that looks cool. Wow. It's like a very, it's a very thick, very large fighter. 
That is interesting. It's got a lot of struts on it. I'm imagining, based on the amount of struts that are on this thing, that it's designed to withstand ridiculously overpowered maneuvers, like stupid things, like, you know, just, just really stupid things. Also, you, wow, you're using one of the giant landing gear up front. Man, I can't wait for 1.1 to come out, because they're going to add the thing where those landing gear will automatically self-orient towards the ground. That'll be so cool. He also said when he sent this in that there was some clipping that he was afraid I wouldn't like, that he was afraid to modify for performance reasons. The only clipping I see that I really dislike in any way is this front landing gear being clipped in like that. But with stock landing gear, that's what you have to do. So, you know, I'm not upset by it. And nothing else looks bad on here, so I, I kind of don't know what he was talking about. I assume it, I can only assume it was talking about the landing gear, but uh, that's not a problem. Whoa, yeah, that thing takes off pretty quickly on its own. Oh yeah, watch those landing gear fold up in there. Looks pretty cool. And uh, I'll go ahead and turn the flaps back off. Yeah, it's one to toggle these flaps. So it does have flaps, and we are already going at a pretty... Pretty decent speed. Let's see if I can break it despite the amount of struts it has on it because, I mean, when I see a plane with that many struts on it, my first thought is, can I break this? I'd like to break this. Um, honestly, I don't know. I don't know. It might need those. It might not. It might not be able to handle stupidly high g-forces even with those. I mean, you really shouldn't expect it to handle something like this. But it does. Nothing really should handle something like that. But this does. Oh yeah. There we go. So yeah, once you're in the range of super maneuverability, it's, uh, it slows down quite a bit because it is massive. It is a massive fighter. And so while once you're... What the... Oh, that's one of the struts. That's... <laughs> the struts are blocking my view. I can't see. Ah, no. <laughs> but, uh... Oh, yeah. I forgot I had that installed. I was wondering what the fuck that was. I was like, wait, why are those there? Yep. Okay, let's check its yaw. Can yaw pretty s substantially. It uh, rolls pretty fast. Very nice. See, the only problem with it is because it's so big. Well, actually, basically, as long as you keep going fast with it, as long as you don't pull up too much, too fast, this thing probably can perform pretty damn well and carry a substantial armament. So that's nice. Yeah, I think this is a pretty good plane. Alright, let's go ditch it into the ocean. And let's go ahead and keep the engines throttled up slightly. So we crash at a substantial speed, not just going slowly. I think 200 meters per second is still a bit too fast to be crashing into the ocean. So I'm going to go ahead and kill off some of this speed. But, uh, whoops. Okay, there we go. Let's say 115, 114, whatever, 100 and something and cut the engines. As I expected, the plane survives. We lose the engines, we lose the intakes, we lose a bit of the nose, but the majority of the structure is intact and flaming in the water. Very nice. So next up, we have a pump one missing. Hey, don't worry, it's okay. I made sure to get the correct version. Yes, this was made by Heroic Stumpy. It's a boat. There's two versions of it that he sent me, one that has an extra modded part, that was what I was looking at for a split second there, that had a pump on it, I don't know what that was, but uh, he took that out and sent it back in, and I like this. It's got like this decking, makes me think, it's got like the pontoons, it's got, uh, what are these called? Oh, these are air brakes. Oh, that's interesting, I've never seen someone use air brakes like that before. Do you, oh, can you like activate the air brux, air brux, air brakes to have like a little platform for the car to sit on? That's interesting. It's got a little car. It's like a little lander thing. Oh, it's got little uh, engines there. So does these... These are... Well, these ones are uh, empty. These are... Oh, that's interesting. So some things have oxidizers, some things have liquid fuel, some things have both. Overall is what it looks like. Interesting. So we have, we have jet engines, but we also have rocket engines on here. And I imagine if I look at the front, there'll be some reversing engines. I, I don't know what that little... Oh, that's part of the... Uh, yeah, that's part of the nose cone sticking out of the intake. It looks, it actually looks kind of cool like that. Like it looks weird, but in a good way. And it has some solar panels, plenty of docking ports. So you're supposed to launch things off of it. I could see someone launching stuff on, off of this. 
It is designed to help land uh, help hull land craft. It has the capacity to deliver a payload to foreign lands. While out on a mission, the craft is able to do some science while you're on the field. It opens and closes the bay, which I'm guessing is these air brakes, with one. Toggle the rocket engines with two. Toggle the main jet engines with three. Four for solar panels. Five for ladders. And six for afterburners. I'm going to forget what all of those things are, except for, because I'm going to purposely remember, don't hit four while moving. And uh, otherwise... Let's go ahead and get this boat out on the water. But wait, you say, we're on land. How am I gonna get to the water? That was the correct key. I was pretty sure I hit the wrong key. Yes, Alt P. This is a mod called Vessel Mover, which allows my phone to ring. I'm simultaneously happy and upset that I am now important enough to be called while recording. And my phone just went off. God damn it, phone. So anyhow, this is a mod that is very, very handy for moving things around when you need to move them around. I believe if you hit tab, yes. Tab allows you to go between lucrative speed, which puts you very high up so you don't collide into things, and then the normal mode, which you saw me just in, and slow mode for making fine adjustments. And it's called Vessel Mover, and it's very useful for if you need to move something around. By the way, I'd like to thank Heroic Stumpy for saying, hey, you know, to get it into the water, here's this mod. I mean, I'd already been using it, but thank you very much for including it, because it's like, oh yeah, 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 that's... It. I mean, if I hadn't known about it, then I would have been like, well, I got a boat, but I don't know how to do anything with it, so I don't know what to do, you know, so thank you. Anyhow, let's go ahead and put this in the water. Ooh, <laughs> even with that, it uh, fell a little. Okay, one, I believe, yep, puts those up. <coughs> Excuse me. And because, oh, okay, because of the way the wheels work, they actually, uh, I thought it was going to have that be like a thing where uh, the wheels don't, uh, don't collide because they're part of the same vessel, but no, 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 that's not what happened at all. Two activates the rocket's engines. Okay, so I'm going to turn that back off. And three activates the jet engines. I'm going to turn the rockets back off. Four. Four is the solar panels. Yes, I just remembered. Yep, it's two here. Well, two ones here. And, oh, this was, this was made before 1.0.5. You know how I know that? Because this kind of solar panel no longer retracts. When you deploy them, they stay deployed. You have to use the ones that have the uh, cowling on them in order to have them not, in order to have them retractable. Also, y your solar panels clip with the lights when you yeah that's bad anyhow four oh yeah like i just said i can't do anything five five i believe is switching mode on these no no okay i don't know what five does though i i forgot what it does well let's hope it wasn't important six we'll put those in wet mode i'm gonna put them back into dry mode for now and i'm gonna go to full throttle and we're gonna see how well this thing performs in the water and make sure we don't take off. I mean, you know, we, we could, but uh, I don't I don't think that's uh, what, what a boat should do. And I'm sorry about the lag, but this does have quite a few parts and my computer is not what it used to be. I don't know what it is. I, I th I'm pretty sure I used to be able to handle more parts in KSB. Oh yeah, five is the ladders. Yes, two ladders on the sides, on the front. My computer used to be able to handle bigger things in KSP. But, uh, not anymore. I don't know what changed, but I guess just as time has gone on and maybe with more mods installed, maybe if I uninstalled some of these mods it would perform a bit better. I don't know. I just noticed we also have a docking thing down here. That's interesting. So if you want to dock something at water level, you can. Okay, let's go ahead and activate the rockets and turn on the afterburners so that things go faster. I hit the wrong keys, actually. So there we go. We're now going at what this thing's maximum speed should be. Well, we're not at the maximum speed yet, but we are thrusting to maximum speed. And it looks like our maximum speed is about 34, 34 meters per second. Can go a little bit over, but it stays around 34 meters per second. 34.2 or 0.3 seems to be the medium. Yeah, because it keeps bouncing between 1 and 6. So actually it'd be like 34.3 meters per second. And of course, uh, part of that is rockets, so you will be burning through your fuel quite quickly. Turning off the rockets drops us down to... Let's see. Oh, we're still dropping. And... Looks like we've just about stabilized at around 26 meters per second. So there we go. That is a boat. I like the, uh, the science package slash, uh, antenna you got here. 
some batteries it looks like we got a uh, radioisotropic thing that I said completely wrong radio radio isoelectric no come on radioisotope thermoelectric generator there you go sorry I forgot how to say it it's been so long we got some very various science equipment in there it, I like how it, it kind of looks like an engine almost it makes me think of an engine or just well not an engine really it's just like it's a science package it's the science package that the antenna and everything else is like all built into it's it's a very nice centerpiece to this and I like how the shape of the boat makes sense pretty much so very happy with it overall thanks for sending it in I'm gonna see what happens if I do this while we're going fast probably nothing too bad yeah cuz the, the the car isn't actually touching the water but uh, I'm gonna do something rather stupid Will it sink? Oh my god, yes, it sunk. Hold on, I have to switch to that. <laughs> Wait a second, I just realized. This means, this means because of the whole, like, uh, point cars have, well, not cars. Everything has a buoyancy, and that's how, like, we know whether things will sink or float and everything in KSP. And now that it has that mechanic in it, we now have, we now have a, oh, I can't do that, okay. We, we now have, I just realized, we now can drive cars underwater. We can drive cars underwater. Hold on. I need to bring this over to shore and flip it right side up. Okay, I'm actually going to have us drive it into the water. But first, I need to remember how the hell to... How do I alter... Is it... Nope. Is it shift? Nope. I don't remember how to use this. Nope, that's not it. Nope. Oh. Oh, okay, it uses translation controls to allow you to change the roll. Well, uh, except for Q and E. Q and E are actually used to roll. But we just need to flip it over like this, so everything should be fine. I, it's kind of funny how it's slightly moving us doing that. So here we are. Oops, I accidentally went to Lucritus. And back on the ground we go. So here we are in a little car that I'm now driving backwards. Oh, the controls... Really, are the controls for the the controls for this car backwards? Well, I guess that makes sense considering what it came off of. Oh, you know what? We might no. We're controlling from the docking port. I bet. I bet that's why. But in any case, we have the worst submarine ever invented because it only drives along the bottom of the water at an extremely slow pace. So yes, thank you for sending in the boat and this car. And also, I just remembered that because the loading range has been extended. That's actually still going away from us. It's still it's still driving away. At least I think it is. Let's see if we can switch to it. Yep, it's still... Oh yeah, I did cut the engine, so it's stopped going away from us pretty much. But yes, it is still out here, even though it is three kilometers away. Very nice. All right, next up from Sirius, we have the Sirius S... Sir, oh yeah, Sirius... F F53, which has a very strange arrangement of clipping control surfaces that are active, which makes me kind of sad, because if they weren't clipping, I mean, if they weren't clipping and they're active, or they were clipping but inactive, that's cool, but because they're clipping and active, that's going to... That's going to look really weird when we fly it. I like the overall design, I just wish you hadn't done that, that's all. And it's it's a very wide fighter, very high lift, I'd say, on this. It's a very, um, it's a very large fighter, like, not very large, yeah, well, yeah, pretty much, it's a large fighter, but without, I think, as much mass as is typically in a large fighter, because it is made more of wing panels. So it definitely should be interesting to fly, especially with all these strangely placed control surfaces all over it see any description it is the first fighter jets don't have very much roll but very yaw <laughs> one to switch mode which i'm guessing is the afterburners and it uses tweak scale and kerbal joint reinforcement uh and by that no no i don't i don't use that uh i used to use that for a little while but then they made joints better in ksp so i didn't see the need for it anymore i'm looking at it trying to figure out what was tweak scaled right now I don't see what was tweak scaled. Are you sure you use tweak scale? Either that or my tweak scale has glitched and completely broken and stopped scaling things because it, I do have it installed. It's not like I've forgotten it, but I don't see anything tweak scaled. Unless these are... Uh, no, that's the standard. Yeah, that's... that's No, I, I don't get it. Okay, whatever. Okay. Here goes lots and lots of control surfaces everywhere. Jump into the air like you just don't care. Yeah, I figured it would maneuver that quickly. Yeah, so the roll 
is very, very little on this thing, which is not so good. However, it apparently has really good yaw. And I'd say, yeah, that's pretty good yaw. Unfortunately, your yaw pretty much completely counteracts your roll to where I can't particularly roll and yaw at the same time very well. But yes, there we go. We've done a complete roll. Let's pitch up. The pitch is pretty good. It's a bit slower than I'd expect it to be, actually. That's interesting. Maybe all those wings are slowing us down more than I thought they were. So one advantage to having a lot of wings is a lot of, uh, whatchamacallit, a lot of lift. But the disadvantage is that uh, during maneuvers, that lots of lift can cause you lots of problems. Also, I just noticed this thing has a weird... I'm not talking about that shifting in the center, which you should have some struts on that, or that's what the Kerbal Joint Reinforcement was for, but uh, it's not strictly necessary, and I'm not going to be like, oh, you're bad, because you didn't strut that, because you did intend for this to be using Kerbal Joint Reinforcement. So yeah, the roll problem is because it has such a huge amount of wing surface, you need a huge amount of roll control in order to sufficiently tell it to roll, and unfortunately, well, now it's rolling opposite of the roll controls that I'm holding down. So, you know what? There's something fucked up in your roll controls, you know that? You got, yeah, because look, look, when I roll, the whole thing basically counteracts itself everywhere. So there's some control surfaces that really should be inverted that aren't. And... I believe that was a feature that was supposed to be fixed in 1.0.5. If I'm wrong, it was supposed it's going to be fixed in 1.1. But in the meantime, there are several control surfaces here that are counteracting each other, and that's why you have such roll control problems. It's simply that you have all these things that should be going one way, and they're going a different way, like these. Okay, these are all inverted. So let's let's uh, invert these, and let's invert these, and now. Well, now it's, uh, hold on. Okay, I'm trying to turn that way. Well, now, what the hell? Oh, well, now, uh, the inverted control doesn't actually change anything. That's, what the fuck? The, the, in, they made the inversion only control the deploy angle? That's really stupid, so now you can't fix that. Ah. Oh. I know exactly what's wrong with this design. It's just the way KSP works, you can't fix it. That's really stupid. I'm upset now on behalf, on your behalf, because it's not your fault at all. It's not the plane's fault at all. It's probably a much better design if it just would function properly, but the way the game works, you can't do it. That's that's really stupid. That's really upsetting. You know, they usually they there's very few things that the KSP devs have done that are kind of dumb or you know just didn't work very well and I, I'm really sad to discover that this is one of them that this really only affects deploy it used to you know you used to be able to invert the control surfaces now you can't so yeah especially because when reading their notes about the update they said that you could still do that obviously they were lying so that sucks Next up we have the Sirius R-53, which I'm guessing is a reconnaissance vessel. I believe that's what the R was supposed to stand for. It's a very fast and highly manu- manu- Spell check, man. Spell check. And again, spell check. And again, spell- And locks real y weird. It, dude, seriously. Spell check. It's not that hard. Sorry. Okay, so switch mode, switch mode. What is mode in this case? Oh, toggle engine and switch mode. Yeah, yeah, afterburners and uh, the other thing. And this is- <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's clippy, but uh, I'll, I'll tolerate it. No. Um, oh, that's interesting. You have like the reverse tricycle gear. That's uh, that's very interesting. It's a very. It's like a, I would call this a fly. Like if I was naming this design, I'd call it a gnat or a fly because it's a very tiny, but I imagine very fast plane. And it also probably only flies for like a very very short time because those tiny fuel tanks, that big engine, is gonna go through that. All right. So here we go. Full throttle. Let's see, oh, I don't have that mod installed anymore that tells me how much flight time I have based on fuel. So I can't directly look at that.
but I'm pitching up as hard as I can, and I believe you've put your center of, well, not your center of lift, your landing gear, your rear landing gear, I believe, is too far back, considering the fact that I can't pull up off the runway. I imagine this relies on dropping off the end of the runway to function, which is not good. It's not a good thing for your plane to be relying on, especially because it means that you can take off from the runway, but where else are you going to, wow. Where else are you going to take off from? And I'm just saying wow, because you see how, how this thing just went immediately straight up. So yeah, it is super maneuverable. It is super, super maneuverable to the point where I can just spin around however much I want. And with the afterburner, I imagine I imagine with the afterburner I can get up to a pretty decent speed. Of course, the flight time on it is very limited. This makes me think of like early experimental kind of planes because it definitely has a very, very short flight time. But you can see we're probably going to break the speed of sound here. We already have, actually. I wasn't paying attention, and we actually broke it. We're actually, we might make it to Mach 2. I'm turning on SAS. Ooh, gosh, I'm turning it back off. Yeah, this thing can't fly with SAS. That's how how fast it is That and how many control surfaces it has, that it loses maneuverability. We're now going Mach 2 at 1.5 kilometers. This thing is very, very fast. Slight maneuver, and you take a lot of G-forces. I'm turning the uh, engine, I'm turning the engine off to slow down so that we can pull up without falling apart. Well, actually, I'll just go ahead and pull up and see if it breaks. Holy shit, GFX, you work! <laughs> I have the GFX mod installed. I've had it installed for a very long time, but somehow the values on it got messed up to where it takes an extremely high G-force to activate it when it should be much less. Like, let's see, the G-force. Six G's? What? Also, it's slowly blacking out right now. Okay, so, two, two things. This G-force meter is different from the, the G's that the game is reporting. That's... Well, now it's a 6.2. What the hell? We definitely went through more Gs doing that. Also, now GFX is suddenly responding a little more better. A, a, a little more better? A little better. But still, it says we've only endured 8 Gs, but I've pulled it way past 8 Gs. We should be blacked out right now. Well, not blacked out, but in the process of blacking out. That's really weird. I don't know what's gone wrong there. I blame mods. <laughs> That's probably not the best thing to blame. Well, it is and isn't at the same time. But yes, this is a fun little thing to fly around in. And it has a very, very strange design. I like it. Definitely need to move that rear landing gear forward, though. And or uh, also s possibly switch the positions of the landing gear. I'm not sure about that. But uh, probably not a bad thing to do. Oh wait, before I stop, I have not tried rolling it massively. Okay, it doesn't roll too fast, but it rolls pretty fast. All right, last but not least for this time around, also by Sirius, we have the Sirius S53. I'm curious what it is with F with 53 that he likes so much. That's interesting. The engines are slightly angled down, it looks like. Ever so slightly angled down. Or maybe not the engines, but the intakes in the front and the this part is slightly angled down. That probably has better performance in flights, or maybe at, at least at uh, high altitude flights, because of the angle of ta uh, angle of attack versus the angle you're well angle of attack. Yes, because angle of attack, if you didn't know, is basically the angle that your wings are at above the direction of flight. Also, I'm currently using my computer's exhaust heat to warm my foot by accident, and it's quite nice. Sorry, I just I just thought I'd mention that because it just happened by accident, and I thought it was hilarious. Also, I like how this design has the antihedral wings and has a. Uh, giant vertical surfaces but at such an angle to where these are working both as ver they're working as like elevons they're working as elevons yeah well yeah they, yeah they are working as elevons but that's not what i meant specifically i'm saying they're they the the rear part works as elevons but they're working as both wings and vertical stabilizers of course the wings also well the, the wings are anti-stabilization basically because they are antihedral but uh i hope antihedral is the right word i'm 99 percent sure it is but uh if i'm wrong whoops Really fast plane, really maneuverable plane, very sexy plane. <laughs> I agree with you there. And I forget if I've said it already or not, but this will be the last plane that I take a look at today. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the aerodynamic forces here to see how this thing 
lines up. Oops, that's the wrong button. Although, I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. L landing gear, I told you to go up. That's weird. They didn't respond. All right. Oh, this uh, this is a pretty fast plane too. Let's see. Let's see. Can we get to Mach 1? Let's see. Can we uh, activate the afterburners? With the afterburners, we can definitely get to Mach 1. Can we stay above Mach 1 now that we've deactivated the afterburners? And the answer is yes. Looks like it. We're slowly losing speed, but not too slowly. Lots of drag. Let's go ahead and pull up really hard. Oh, wow. Yeah, lots of body lift there in the high G maneuvers because, you know, well, it's a basically the body lift, those light blue arrows you'll see. That's when you're at a sufficiently high angle of attack to actually start to produce lift from the body pieces, which is pretty cool. And uh, overall, I, yeah, I like this. It's pretty fun to fly. Let me go ahead and turn those back off. It's pretty stable, too. I like this. It's stable without really dipping down too much. It's got good roll stability, too. Yeah. Very nice. And... Oh, there we go. Now we're getting some a slight bit of the darkening of the screen, a slight bit of GFX. But uh, still not nearly as much as we should have had, and the G-Force Endured is... Only 9 Gs for some reason it's saying. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to look into that. But uh, the main reason I haven't looked into that is because with the plane reviews, I want to see what the plane can do more than see a fancy effect because the pilot blacks out because, you know, I'm playing with GFX. So I don't really want to enable that for the plane reviews. And since I use the same install that I use for plane reviews for other things, I just don't want to modify that. And I thought I was going to crash right there. That's why I uh, suddenly did weird maneuvers and talked strangely. The only part of clipping about this, I, well, there's a couple things of clipping on this, but I just, no, I'm just going to shut up about it. No, I'm, I'm not going to complain about it right now because, you know, people are always complaining about my complaining about it. So, no, I'm just not going to, I'm not going to give you that pleasure today. <laughs> yeah, I figured this would have really good yaw performance with those giant vertical stabilizers and elevons. This is actually, this is, gosh, this is so funny. I'm sorry, but flying it like this, this is funny. This is very entertaining to me. I really like this design. Thank you for sending these in, Sirius. Thank you. And thank you to everyone else as well, but it's just... This is the one that, at this very moment, I'm just like, oh, this is great. So, that's all for this time. Thanks for watching. And I will see you in space.